Welcome back everybody to another Moto Bob video. Now all the new bikes for 2024 have been announced off the back of the major motorcycle shows and so it's time to round up the best of the best and in this video we're talking touring bikes. So here we go and as usual we'll go in price order ascending. Now first up we've got a new middleweight adventure tourer from Suzuki and this one's called the V-Strom 800 RE. Effectively what you've got here is a more road focused version of the V-Strom 800D that they launched a year prior and they've achieved it with lighter cast wheels with a smaller diameter front that should significantly improve the road handling. They've also reduced the height of the bike a bit which should again make it better through corners but also should make it more approachable for shorter riders especially with low speed maneuvers that can feel a bit sketchy on a tall bike when you're loaded up with a passenger and or luggage. On top of that quite literally this bike also gets the wider touring windscreen as standard and so it looks like a solid package for some light touring, especially with that torquey, smooth parallel twin at the heart of it, which was a real standout feature for me when I tried out the DE version. If you like the look of this one, then some of the competition that you might want to also consider would be the Kawasaki Versus 650, which is a bit of a proven workhorse, the Yamaha Tracer 7 with its lively CP2 parallel twin, or perhaps the best of the bunch would be the Triumph Tiger Sport 660, which gets a much more revvy inline triple, and also great road manners. Also on the adventure touring front, you've now got the Yamaha Tenere 700 Explore, and this one's a new addition for 2024. Now it's still going to be predominantly off-road focused because it's so heavily based upon the standard T7, and so it's quite simple, like a big dirt bike and without many creature comforts. Thing is, they've made this Explore version a little more touring focused though, like the V-Strom 800RE, they've lowered the suspension a bit, and again that's brought down the seat height and so it now comes in at 860 mil which is at least slightly more appealing to shorter riders than the standard version. They've also fitted a bigger windscreen, you get a quick shifter as standard too and then lastly you get the luggage racks thrown in although you'll have to spec it up at the dealer with the hard luggage or soft luggage at an extra cost. Still certainly one to look at if you fancy the Tenere but predominantly you stick into tarmac. Now it's a bit of a jump up in price to just over 12 grand but that will get you the newly updated Tiger. 900 GT. Again, we're in this sort of adventure touring kind of realm, but this is the most road focused Tiger 900 having cast wheels and the 19 inch front. Now for 2024, it's got quite a bit more power than the previous generation. So that came in at 94, whereas this new version gets 106. And they've also fitted it with rubber mounted handlebars to reduce the vibes from that T-plane crank in the engine. And they were significant and noticeable at motorway speeds. So I'm really hoping that this addresses that issue. On top of that, you've got new bodywork for a slightly more modern look, as well as some well thought out safety features like the new always on position lights and the emergency stop lights feature. Definitely one to shortlist if you're looking for an upright mid tourer in that sort of 900 capacity kind of range. Although some of the other options I'd definitely recommend checking out include the Yamaha Tracer 9, which also gets a three cylinder engine, which is absolutely fantastic. There's the Honda NT1100, which is based upon the Africa Twin platform and does get some new colours for 2024, or perhaps you could even consider the BMW F900XR. If however you're looking for something a little more sporty, like a sports tourer kind of vibe, then new for 2024 we've got the Suzuki GSX S1000GX. Now this bike gets an inline 4 that makes around 150 horsepower, and it is pretty similar to the GT version that they announced the year before it. The key difference here though is that it sits a little taller for that sort of crossover sports tourer stance and that gives you a nice commanding riding position and also good visibility. But the other big strength is that it also now sits on semi-active electronically adjustable suspension which is actually a first for Suzuki despite being available elsewhere on the market for many years now. Still they've come with a very advanced looking system certainly for a first stab at it and it makes use of stuff like Skyhook which effectively imagines the bike is suspended from a hook in the sky hence the name, and aims to keep the main body of the bike travelling level while the wheels and suspension soak up the undulations in the surface. Then you've got self-leveling in terms of preload, anti-dive for more support on the front end under braking, and also the damping ties into all the different riding modes. So this one looks like it should be pretty damn good in terms of brisk riding in comfort. Other options in this part of the market include the GT if you want something a little lower slung and you don't fancy forking out for the fancy suspension 
suspension, there's the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX, which is a proven performer over the years and also offers a similar inline 4000cc engine. And then also perhaps the BMW S1000XR, which we'll get onto in a moment as it also got a few updates for this year. Speaking of BMW, we also have, of course, the BMW R1300GS. And while you might categorize this strictly as more so a large capacity adventure bike, it is absolutely possible to spec it up in a fairly road biased way. Plus, I'm sure we'll see plenty of them over the next few years slogging the miles out up and down the motorway across the country and in fact the globe. Now the whole bike has had a significant reworking versus the 1250 version that preceded it with a new engine that makes more power, a lighter aluminium frame replacing the previous gen steel trellis, lots more tech including radars front and rear and a striking new aesthetic which I must admit is taking a little bit of getting used to. I should also add they've got quite the luggage system for this bike and although it's not going to be cheap it's probably the most advanced luggage system on the market. You see it's adjustable in volume, it gets central lock-in with the keyless ignition, you've got integrated lighting so you can see your stuff and also you get a charging port to keep your devices juiced up so I think that pretty much makes it the Rolls Royce of plastic boxes. Now options are plentiful in the large capacity adventure tourer market so do check out the Triumph Tiger 1200 GT which is a great all-rounder and there's also the Explorer version which gets a 30 litre fuel tank for some serious range. Then there's the Ducati Multistrada V4S which gives you the superbike vibes from the V4 engine along with 170 horsepower peak. There's the KTM 1290 Super Adventure S which is an absolute riot but with a comfortable riding position. And then you've also got the Honda Africa Twin Adventure Sports. This one updated for 2024 with a lower stance and a new more road focused 19 inch front wheel. And I guess the big USP for the Africa Twin is the fact you can have it fitted with their DCT gearbox which effectively makes it automatic. Now we already mentioned the S1000XR earlier and this is a much more sporty bike than the GS with the whole bike being heavily based upon the S1000R naked. So the engine, wheels and tyres, the brakes and the suspension are all not dissimilar to what you'd expect to find on a sports bike but at the same time it's got that crossover stance with the tall seat height and the generous wind protection all of which aim to make it decent over distance. Now for 2024 it gets a bit of a bump in power with five more horses taking it up to 100 170 peak. The ergonomics have been tweaked a bit for a more aggressive riding position with the seat being raised. And also there's some new standard equipment like the adaptive cornering headlight and keyless ignition. Also announced this year was the M1000XR which is a super spec performance version that comes in at well over £20,000. And this thing gets all of the goodies that we're used to seeing on their M branded bikes like the M brakes, the fancy paintwork and the option of carbon bodywork and wheels. The biggest enhanced though has to be the inclusion of their shift cam variable valve timing and lift system which is carried over from the S1000RR sports bike and that means that peak power can go right up to over 200 horses. So this really is quite an unusual proposition to have such a rapid bike with a relatively cozy riding position. Similar money will also get you another blend of ridiculous power and comfort but this time from Ducati with their Multistrada V4S Tour. Now it gets the same 170 horsepower as the other Multistrada V4 bikes and the chassis is pretty much the same as the V4S but effectively what you've got with this GT version is all of the goodies from the accessories catalogue included as standard. So there's the 60 litres of hard luggage, heated seats front and rear, heated grips, front and rear radars which give you extra tech like the adaptive cruise control and the blind spot detection, full riding modes, a quick shifter, a USB charging socket, keyless ignition and fog lights to boot. It really does feel like a comprehensive touring setup and actually being cocooned on it with all that tech really did remind me of perhaps a more placid bike but definitely a perennial solid recommendation on the touring market and that's the BMW R1250 RT. The Boxer Twin doesn't deliver quite as many thrills and the handling definitely biases more towards stability than it does the slightly quicker handling but it does get the radar tech, the massive TFT display, the phone stash and the same sense of like completeness in terms of features without being a true heavyweight. That title is much more fitting for something like the Honda Goldwing which is pretty much the same for the new model year so you've still got 
the flat six super smooth engine, the same chassis setup and the same tech, but we do now get some new color choices and I particularly like the sort of khaki green, which is a bit of an unexpected success because it's normally the sort of color you'd expect to see on an adventure bike. Still a great bike and one that I've had plenty of experience of, almost all of it positive, although I should also point out that the K1600s from BMW offer a lot of the same capabilities. The most interesting development ahead of the next model year though is probably this new hydrogen powered bike from Kawasaki which looks to be roughly based upon their H2SX Sports Tourer. Now the H2SX is one of the most tricked out sports bikes you can buy certainly in the SE spec not just for all the tech and the bling hardware but also the fantastic supercharged H2 engine which is blisteringly quick. Kawasaki have been putting a lot into their green initiatives recently, launching a couple of electric bikes as well as some hybrids. And so this looks like the next step on their journey with experimental vehicles. So I'd love to know from you, is it something you'd even consider? Do let me know down in the comments because I'd absolutely love to know what you think of it. Also, if you want to see my full review of the Goldwing I just mentioned, then I'll leave it on the screen here. It's my five things you need to know before you buy one. So if you're a Goldwing fan, do check it out. Hit subscribe if you've not already if you want to see more videos like this many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one